The Morton Theater is an Athens, Georgia landmark. Built in 1910, this historic theater is listed in the National Register of Historic Places. The Morton is now operated as a community performing art space by the athens Clark County Leisure Services Department with support from the nonprofit Morton Theater Corporation. The Morton is also the site of some unexplained encounters. Join us now for Athens Ghost Hunt, the Morton Theater. We begin with a brief history of the Morton. Hello, my name is Lynn Battles Green, and I am the facility supervisor here at the Morton Theater. The Morton Theater was built in 1910 by Monroe Bowers Morton, or Pink Morton as he was better known. At the time, uh, it was the largest building built by a colored man in all the world. We are the oldest surviving vaudeville theater uniquely built, owned, and operated by an African-American in the United States. On West Washington and Hull Streets, which became known as Hot Corner, because of course the Morton sits here, and with performers inside and without modern heating and air, windows were up and the music inside spilled out onto the street. So the Hot Corner was a hip happening place to be, it really was. Between the Morton Building, uh, the Old Samaritan Building, the Union Building, and of course the businesses that uh, are across the street, that made up the center of all African-American life, not just here in Athens, but throughout the region. No matter what you needed, you could get it on the hot corner. Now, the Morton Building, of course, was more than just the Morton Theater. There were doctor's offices, dentist offices, insurance companies, barber shops, beauty shops, a pool hall, not one but two funeral homes, and all of those under one roof where the main stage event was, of course, the Morton Theater. Now the Morton Building was a great building for commerce, for entertainment, and just social gathering. Eventually through the years though, it became a burlesque house for a bit, once vaudeville fell out of style, eventually turning over into a single room movie house. Uh, 1930s to the 1950s, it served in that capacity until in 1954, a fire started back in the projection booth. At that point, a fire marshal came in, the first time he'd ever been in. All 700 seats only had one door in and one door out, so the doors to the theater were closed for the next 40 years. All the other spaces in the building continued to operate and were leased out by the family that owned the building. Now, in the late 70s, young students from some of the businesses that occupied other spaces started to make their way up into this space, realizing there's a theater up there, and they began rehearsing and really trying to take care of what had become the biggest pigeon house in all of Athens. At that point, citizens became aware of this building and decided it needed to be saved. So, through grassroots efforts, vaudeville shows, and a lot of fundraising, as well as a grant, they were able to buy the building and actually save it from the wrecking ball. They put a new roof on it, threw a few more fundraisers, and then what? Well, luckily, the citizens of athens Clark County agreed that the building needed to be saved, and through their efforts supporting the Morton, uh, they were able to raise the $1.8 million needed to renovate the space through the special project's local option sales tax. Of course, the catch with that is you have to be an athens Clark County facility in order to receive the funds. So the nonprofit Morton Theater Corporation handed over the building to athens Clark County, and today, the Morton Theater is a community performing arts center. Uh, but we're not limited to just arts and shows and music. We can also do social functions and corporate functions. It is a wonderful place where people can come together and really put on shows that not only benefit themselves, but 90% of our renters are nonprofit organizations. And they use the funds that they produce here to go out and put their own visions and missions. So we're not just part of entertainment, we're, we're part of the fabric of athens Clark County. We're down on West Washington Street, right at the corner of Hull, at a place that used to be known as Hot Corner, in front of the Morton Theater. My name is William Orton Carlton. Everybody knows me as Hort. I've heard rumors that the Morton Theater is haunted. I can't substantiate these rumors, but I have had somebody tell me that there was a definitely odd presence in the building. I don't know anymore. The history of the Morton includes reports of some unexplained encounters. These are the ghost stories of the Morton Theater. My name is Barbara Andrews and I am the Arts and Nature Administrator for athens Clark County. One day, I actually walked out of the auditorium after a very early morning walkthrough, turned off the light, went to walk out, and the light turned back on as I was standing there, which was a little disconcerting. So. 
I turned around and I looked and I turned it off again, went to leave and it turned back on, which was really, really odd. And I thought, well, I hope we don't have some kind of electrical issue here. So I look, I, I, I look out into, towards the stage and I see this blue light emanating from the stage left. And it was a pulsating blue, very bright light. Now this auditorium is very dark. And even though we have blackout shades, um, sometimes you can see headlights coming through there. This was not like that. This was on the stage and it almost had a sound. It was really bizarre. So I thought, okay, having not learned anything from old horror movies, I went to investigate. Um, and so I took my flashlight, turned the lights off, turned, went up onto the stage and the light was in the corner here and then it disappeared. Now I, I went and turned on the stage lights and I was trying to find any place where there could have been lights leaking through. There was nothing. I'm Ricky Whitlock. I've been with Athens Clark County since 93. I haven't personally had no experiences with ghosts in the theater, um, but when we took over the building, uh, there was a story, a couple of stories came with the building that we were told. Um, one of them was an actual electrician came in on Saturday with his four-year-old daughter at the time, and they were up on the stage uh, doing some wiring, and he recognized her waving. And when uh, he noticed her waving, he asked, who are you waving at? And she said, the gentleman on the beam. And she pointed at the light fixtures that's up in the ceiling where they come out at. And he looked up and he says, there's nobody there. And the four-year-old said, yes, daddy, there's an elderly man with a beard and overalls. My name is Joyce Reefsteck, and I had the honor and the privilege of being the events coordinator during the Morton Centennial Year Celebration in 2010. During my time at the Morton, I did have some very unusual experiences. Um, probably the most profound one happened one day when I was planning an event and had to come into the Morton and go and meet with the caterer at the caterer's warehouse. And I, have a two and, I had a two and a half year old son at the time, and of course we had a babysitter. So one day, the babysitter put my son down for a nap, and she had to run out to her car to get a book so she just dashed out to the car. She didn't even have shoes on. She grabbed her car keys, went out to the car, got the book, and realized when she returned that she had accidentally locked herself out of the house. So she panicked. Now, what's really interesting is I never take a phone call during a meeting, but for some reason, when I felt that buzzing in my pocket, I thought, you know, I better take this call. This very frantic babysitter's on the line explaining to me how she left my baby at my house alone, locked in the house, and she's downtown looking for me. And all of a sudden, I became absolutely calm. And I said, it's okay, settle down, drive back to my house, I'll have my husband meet you there. And within 10 minutes, everybody was at the house. He checked on the baby, everything was fine. Of course, the babysitter was panicky and teary, and thought she'd lost her job, but it, was, it all ended up okay. Later on that evening, when I was putting my son to bed, he said, Mommy, Kelly left me today. And I said, well, she didn't leave you. She accidentally locked herself out of the house. And he said, well, Mommy, it was okay because Pink came and he watched me the whole time that Kelly was gone until Daddy got home. And okay, I don't know if you can see this on camera, but uh, just telling that story, first of all, I'd almost cry every time I tell the story. And second of all, it, it really just chills me because my son had no knowledge, he was two and a half. He had no knowledge of, of where I worked or who Pink Morton was, but he has talked about that several times since about how that man named Pink came and stayed with him when the babysitter went away. The second story, that I, we were told about was a welder who was welding in the same area where the gentleman was sitting for the little girl. And he was doing some welding and he stopped to check his weld. 
and he raised his shield up and he just got the sense that somebody was looking at him. And he looked up and, uh, well, the welder left the building. And they said that later he told them that there was an elderly black man with a beard and overalls sitting right next to his weld watching him. And that's what he told his friends that he worked with. And he said he would not come back to this building. The other story that is very interesting is that somebody is seen looking out of the light booth. And that's sort of strange because that light booth was not always there. I think it might have been in the early part of the 20th century, this, the, the Morton became a, um, a movie house. So that prop room uh, would have been turned into uh, where the projection room would have been. Somebody who came to, uh, who worked for the Fox Theater Institute in, in Atlanta was visiting because they were helping to fund a restoration project here and a representative was checking on the status of, uh, of the project. And she, she was up in the balcony and she could feel somebody watching her and she looked in the window there and there was a man standing there staring at her. There was nobody there. The person just kind of faded away and she was totally, totally freaked out. But it, it goes along with what other people have seen time and time again is that there is somebody walking around, peering out in that booth. Now there was a fire in that booth that closed the theater down. Um, I think it might have been in the 40s or 50s. We don't know if somebody was killed. We don't know what happened. We have no idea what that could possibly have been. But it is a, an apparition that has been seen several times over the years. In one of the back dressing rooms, um, you just get the sensation of this little child running around. People have heard him laughing. People have heard him talking. He'll run away and hide from you. And I've always personally gotten the sensation of sort of a little mop-haired boy. And a lot of people have said the same thing, that they felt the presence of a child back there. There's a place right through here on this aisle where there is a cold spot. And the more you talk about it, the colder it gets. Many people have experienced that cold spot when the air conditioner's on, when the air conditioner's not on. Um, and a lot of people say that they feel some sort of presence right over here behind my shoulder. This opening right here where the lights are is where both events occurred. He, uh, his feet was actually, the guy said, his daughter said her feet, his feet was hanging down in the air on that opening up there where the lights shine down on the stage. Because he was working on a set of lights up on the actual stage and she was waving into that hole. And so he was on that catwalk and that's where the welder was welding, was actually welding the catwalk in when he saw it. If I was looking for ghosts, in this building, I would start it on the catwalk in the attic and I would go down to the very basement because in the basement used to be a mortuary and they say that's where most of the spirits hang out at. After hearing about these strange experiences at the Morton Theater, we decided an investigation was in order, a paranormal investigation. My name is Beth Peters and I'm with the Ghost of Georgia Paranormal Investigations and we've been called here to um, investigate some paranormal activity claims that are at the Morton Theater. It's a historic theater in, here in downtown Athens. We got here and we unloaded our truck and all of our equipment and now we're setting up base. We've already done a walkthrough and did our base meter readings. That's where you take the EMF readings and the temperature readings and see if there's any unusual spikes. Plus you have a base, so when we're on our investigation tonight, if there's any unusual temperature changes or EMF changes, we'll note that that's different from the base readings. And then of course I did my personal walkthrough, which would be more like a psychic evaluation as well of the building. We're at the Morton Theater here in Athens, Georgia. We're about to do a paranormal investigation. And what we have here is an assortment of our equipment that we're going to use. Right here we have what we call EMF meters or electrical magnetic field meters. It reads the electrical magnetic field in places. This too is like an EMF meter. It's called a REM pod. And what it does, it just makes a lot of noise and all these lights will light up when there's electromagnetic field around it. It works if if a spirit with the energy, with the electromagnetic field energy, 
If it gets close to it, it will light up and make all kinds of noises and we know something's there and we'll go and check it out. Right here is what we call a spirit box and what it does is it scans AM and FM radio stations and it does it so quick that you really can't pick up any DJs. You'll hear a voice every once in a while, but the purpose of this is to help the spirits use the energy from this box to be able to communicate with us and we've actually carried on real time communication with the spirits. And here's a couple of our digital recorders. This is what we get our EVPs on, electric, electronic voice phenomena. We'll ask questions and have these recorders running. And occasionally, upon review, we'll have additional voices that are, are not ours, are not the investigators, and actually they've answered our questions, so it's voices of our spirits that are around. This here is what we call a laser grid, and what it does is it shines a green light and it makes a lot of dots on the wall, or you can rotate it, I don't know if you can see it or not on your camera, but you can make different patterns out of it. And what we do is we turn this on and we'll put it up against the wall. And the principle is, is when a spirit passes in front of it, you'll see a, a distortion in the pattern of lights on the wall. Our pride and joy is, this is a thermal camera. And what it does, the thermal camera will pick up, and see if you can see that there, it picks up on heat, heat and cold signatures. So cold usually it shows up blue and heat will show up reds and yellows. And that way, if we see something in a distance, either cold or hot, then we know that there's somebody there, and if it's nobody that's living, we'll go and investigate that area. And we have a teddy bear that actually, it's got a recorder inside, and once it's turned on, it will repeat questions. And hopefully, if there's somebody around, they'll answer the questions. What we're gonna do is just set up our infrared cameras, our stationary cameras around different locations, set up our illuminators, and hook it up to our DVR system with our monitor over there so we can monitor all the video cameras. As night fell upon the Morton Theater, the investigation was underway. For this particular investigation, we picked these locations here where there's been reports of activity. So hopefully, the reports of activity will be able to record on the video system. Uh, we've been told there's activity on the stage, in the seats, uh, somebody has pointed out that somebody has been uh, looking down from the ceiling, so we've got a camera facing there. Also on the balcony, we've got a camera where people have been reported seeing apparitions there. Uh, also, this is the uh, production booth with the, vi uh, with the projector in it. Uh, people have actually uh, reported seeing apparition in there, so hopefully we'll be able to catch that. And while the investigators will be moving around throughout the theater, we'll also be able to monitor them in case anything happens around them that they're not aware of. Shooting at the Morton at night presents a variety of challenges for us. So we've got some special equipment here that allows us to shoot in low light and also in tight spaces. Everything's uh, shaping up. We've already got some uh, voice recordings and one of our investigators have actually seen a couple shadows so far. All right, so what we're doing right here is we're listening for um, voices on our recorders. We've placed several microphones and recorders around the Morton Theater, and we're trying to get evidence, which we call EVPs. And EVPs is an electronic voice phenomenon. So we haven't even hardly gotten started tonight, and we've already got what we would consider a Class A EVP, and I'd like for you to hear it. Now, what you're going to hear is Gretchen says, mortuary, is this a mortuary? and you're going to hear another voice right up underneath it and you can tell that it's of a different frequency. So when you hear that voice it says something like, is that a mortuary? And you can hear it, it's almost like an echo. So you, it takes about three times before you catch it, but when you catch it, it pops out and you can really hear it. This is the mortuary. The cremation area. Cremation area. This is the mortuary. The cremation area. Cremation there is. This is the mortuary. Cremation area. That is nobody's human voice. That is actually being picked up on the recorder with nobody else except for the person talking that's talking about the cremation area. So it almost sounds mechanical, and that's how you know that it's a different frequency and it's not our voice. That would be considered a Class A EVP. The investigation continued with teams exploring the entirety of the Morton Theater. Audio video and other data was collected in areas of special interest, including the stage, the catwalk above the ceiling, the dressing rooms, 
in the lower portions of the building. So it's 1039 right now, and we set up our equipment somewhere around 6 o'clock in the evening. So we've been here quite a few hours, but now is when the investigation is starting to really get cranky. Our guys have only been out for about a half an hour, and already the batteries are starting to drain in their equipment which is a sign that there's paranormal activity. The theory is, is that spirit energy will drain batteries of your equipment to use energy for themselves, which means that's probably good for us because we probably will get some good communication. I do feel some extra energy in this uh, theater that probably is dated back in several different scenarios of time. And I have picked up on a lot of um, paranormal activity already just myself through personal experiences since I've been here, and so have some of our other team members. There's somebody in particular I want to talk to. I don't know if they're here or not, but I want to talk to Pink Morton. Is he here? I'm concentrating on this area because we have a, an official EVP session going on in this area. And that's where they're actually targeting um, questions, answering, um, asking questions and hoping for answers on their recorders. They're also running flashlights and seeing if they can have like a flashlight communication. And also a lot of times when you're doing direct questions and trying to open a door and actually talk to a spirit to communicate with you, sometimes the evidence will show up on the meters, like you'll see an EMF go up or you'll see one of the cell sensors go off. And what we like to have is like three pieces of evidence to prove that there's actual communication going on. Hi, my name's Gretchen, this is Ed. Hello. And we come from Atlanta to speak with you tonight. Uh, the people who work here and who have visited here have told us that they know that you're here. And we just wanted to come and uh, try to make contact with you tonight so you could tell us your story. All right, good evening. My name is Larry. This here is Chris. Uh, we're just coming in to communicate with you. We're not here to push you out of the place. We actually just come so we can hear your story. Can you make a noise to let us know you're here? Mr. Morton, are you here with us right now? Is there anybody here who was here when the fire started? Someone said there was a fire up here in the projection room. Is there anybody here when that fire happened? Was it a great big fire? Some people say it was a great big fire at the Morton Theater. Our team is very cautious about opening a door to communication to not open that door to communication to just everything out in the world, like I don't want my grandpa to come in, you know. We, are, we try to do direct um, conversation with whatever pertains to this theater and to this theater alone. The claims of activity and what our clients want to know about. And we're also very cautious about closing the door once we're done so it's not to cause any problems when we leave. It is 11.02 and as I was reviewing our audio, I heard a voice that sounds like to me, I want him out. Um, it was recorded in the upper balcony. This is what it sounds like. The teams collected data throughout the night and conducted further EVP sessions. These recordings reveal more unidentified sounds and voices. Feel good about it? Ever drink any moonshine? It's good stuff, isn't it? Tell me your name, please. Spirit, did you hear that? So we're here in the Morton, and it's about 12.40 a.m. We found some interesting things that we haven't so far really been able to explain very well. Uh, we've heard some lengthy whistling that we haven't been able to pinpoint any explanation for. We've heard some interesting things that may sound like voices that we can't find an answer to. And we're just sorting through things as best we can uh, during the night, and then we'll sort through things, both audio, video, in the following days after we get done with the search. 
But it's been very good so far and everybody's been excited by what we've heard and you've seen a lot of people go, oh, wow. The investigation continued into the early hours of the morning. If you're here in the Morton Theater, say Morton Theater. Well, the Morton Theater is just a fantastic building. I'm, I'm so happy that they, uh, they requested us to come and do an investigation here. Uh, not only do we do paranormal investigations, but all of us love historic sites and learn the history of places. And it's just a thrill for us to be here. We do concentrate more so on the areas that reported activity. So we've done the production uh, booth real, real thorough. We've done the stage thoroughly. We've sat in the seats in the uh, auditorium in the balcony and down below, so hopefully we've, we've caught something. So it's about three o'clock in the morning and we are standing here outside the Morton where we've about finished up our investigation. We're gonna be taking all the materials that we filmed and all the audio that we've taken and seeing if we can back up or find any information that backs up some of the stories that we've heard over the years. So we're very thankful for Ghosts of Georgia for coming up and doing this investigation with us. We're thankful for the Morton Theater staff for allowing us to come in and be part of this overnight. And we hope you enjoy what you've seen and we hope you've learned a little bit about the Morton Theater and its history at the same time. A few weeks later, Ed Laughlin from Ghost of Georgia Paranormal Investigations returned to the Morton Theater to deliver his final report. Yes, we were called in to uh, investigate some claims of paranormal activity here at the Morton Theater. What was amazing was we did get a lot of um, data that uh, actually was showing that we may have some paranormal activity here. Uh, one thing we captured was a picture of a blue light or blue orb, and it was an area where witnesses had seen uh, a blue anomaly up there. Also had a picture of something, uh, couldn't really tell you what it was, it just looked like a dark mass and it was in one of the seats in the auditorium and it was right where uh, a lady had claimed to feel cold spots where I think several people had actually uh, felt cold spots in that area. We have what's called a REM pod, it's an electromagnetic field uh, reader and we had one sitting on the stage and during our review of our data we came across where it was going off and nobody was around, which to us indicates that, you know, there's a possible spirit here with uh, giving off some energy. Uh, also, we got numerous, numerous uh, what we call EVPs, electronic voice phenomena, recorded on the audio. And a lot of them were re in response to our questions. Some of them we picked up while we were just doing a walkthrough and they were listening into us. <laughs> it sounded like they were listening into us. Uh, also, several of the investigators had a lot of personal experiences. Several of them had or heard uh, disembodied voices saying hi or hey. Uh, others heard loud noises that we couldn't explain on the investigation. Take all that into account along with uh, eyewitness reports of paranormal activity. We do feel like you do have activity here, some paranormal activity here in the Morton Theater. Can we conclusively say that it's haunted? And unfortunately, we can't. Um, we have to really come back and see if we could duplicate and get the same results we did the first time. But the next time you come to the Morton Theater and you sit down and you hear a whisper in your ear, don't be afraid. It just might be Pink Morton saying hi to you.